All right, well, let's get started. So today's webinar, uh, my name is Will Nobles. I'm the CEO of Vector Choice. And uh, today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about what should you be doing to protect yourself, your business from a cyber attack? Now, I have a special guest with me today, uh, Danny Jenkins. For, uh, he's the CEO of ThreatLocker. ThreatLocker is one of the tools that we use to help protect our clients uh, from an application control and what's called ring fencing uh, standpoint. We'll talk a little bit more about that. This is not a sales, uh, a sales webinar, guys. This is more of an educational. We want to educate the things that are out there. Uh, Danny's going to show you a few uh, examples of what will happen and, and what can happen if you click on certain links and stuff. So I'm going to play a short uh, uh, trailer here to get us started. And cybercrime, if you're interested in watching a documentary uh, more in depth of what we're talking about today, but also will scare you to death uh, in some ways, uh, the movie uh, we uh, I, I'm, I star in that movie as a uh, documentary on Amazon Prime. So if you would like to go to Amazon Prime and see it, if you're interested and you don't have Amazon Prime, and you would like a DVD of it, we could definitely send you a DVD of the movie as well. Um, it, it's really depicting uh, several experts talking about the risk that's out there with cybersecurity. So real quick, let's talk about who Vector Choice is. Uh, we've got guests on here that uh, are not familiar with Vector Choice. Uh, Vector Choice is a managed services provider. We have uh, our corporate offices in Atlanta, Georgia. We have offices in DC, North Carolina, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, Mobile, Alabama, and coming next month, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we have been honored uh, to be accepted uh, for the past two years on the Inc. 5000 uh, and the MSP 501, which is the top managed services providers in the world. Uh, uh, so it's been an honor to uh, have that as well. Uh, a little bit more about Vector Choice. Uh, uh, here's our offices, the, uh, the cities uh, and states that we support, even the countries that we've uh, done business in. We do a lot of things with HIPAA, PCI, ITAR, SOX, and GDPR compliancy. So we know how to secure you and lock you down and make sure your business is running uh, secure and safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and enough of me, enough of Vector Choice. I'm gonna get Danny, uh, Danny here. Danny, like I said, is the CEO of ThreatLocker, uh, one of the products that we use. Uh, he is a brilliant brain, um, been in cyber for uh, several decades now, even though he's still a baby at heart, um, but he is very good. So Danny, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you, uh, Kick it off. Well, well. First of all, thank you for inviting me today. Well, it, it, it's you know we've been working together for some time now, and Vector Choice is a really good partner of Threat Locker, and not not because you buy our product. That's of course important, but because you you really do care about your client security. And when it comes to small businesses, we got into Threat Locker. I got into Threat Locker because I, I just saw this huge problem. Uh, so having good partners helping the small business community, whether it's with ThreatLocker or whether it's with other tools, is, is is really what's required to get us ahead in this war that's currently ongoing against cybercrime. It definitely feels like a war for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, I remember when I, when I first worked on a small business, I, I my background is, is kind of big enterprise. So I've dealt with uh, big banks and insurance companies and healthcare and government agencies and you, you get used to a certain process of um, hackers and attackers and bad guys coming after you and it, when you're a big bank it's, it's just the ongoing course of business it's every day someone's trying to get in and every day you're trying to get them out and just like your physical building banks go home they have safes they have lock, vaults they have time locks they have things like that and uh, they, they were used to their cybercrime, they're used to that cybercrime, and they're, they're almost used to the loss associated with it too. They're willing to write off $500,000 every week just because that's part of their business. Um, so I was used to dealing with that risk, but I remember um, I was called by an insurance broker in, in Australia. So I, I obviously had a reputation in the industry of being one of the best for recoveries from attacks or forensic analysis. And an MSP in Australia called me and they said, I've got a, a small insurance company. They had you know 20 employees or something and they've been ransomware. 
And I, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what ransomware is, but I'm going to break it down just to, to, to say it out. What, what ransomware is essentially a virus or piece of malware on your computer. It's an attacker. They encrypt all of your files or they take your files and then they, or both, and then they send you a mail or they give you a message saying, if you want your data back, you've got to pay me 20, 100, $500,000 to get it back. It, it, we see it all the time. We see it on the news all the time. We see three cities in Florida paid over $2 million in ransoms last year to get their data back. But what what we don't see on the news is every minute there's a small business equally affected by the same cyber attacks. Um, this company, they'd been, everything was gone. Their backups were gone. Their, they'd embedded themselves into the system. Their files were encrypted, their claims databases, their email databases. You just imagine in the morning as, a, as an insurance broker, everything that you're doing is gone. Uh, every customer, it, it's 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 terrifying. And these guys had actually gone off and paid the ransom. Um, so they paid, and, and in 2014, it was much lower. They asked for $20,000, not $500,000. Like, <laughs> like so the, the number... And Danny, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, a small businesses think, I'm never going to get hit by a ransomware attack. I'm too small because they only hear the people in the news, like you were saying before. Um, but we see small businesses get hit every day um, with uh, uh, ransomware attacks. You, and, and that's it. And guess what? CBS don't care about... <laughs> so they just they just don't care they're not going to print it and let, the only time you hear small business is when a group of small businesses like 400 dentists were hit at the same time um so they they just don't care it's not even news uh so the, I, I came in and you know i worked with these guys for probably a month on the recovery and they didn't go out of business and we were able to get 70 to 80 percent of their data back it cost them in terms of loss of business in terms of loss of data, millions of dollars. So it was not a cheap, it, I mean, they, they, they were saved by the fact we could use recovery tools or uh, disk recovery tools, low level recovery tools, but ultimately it was not a cheap savior and they, they had to make some pretty substantial changes afterwards. Um, the interesting part about this is, and this has kind of got my thinking of how the dynamics have changed because coming from that big or enterprise background where people are, I'm used to being attacked to speaking to you know a 65 year old 60 something year old business owner who's essentially brought to tears over the fact his business is gone everything he's worked for is gone because somebody opened an email attachment in his company and and that's ultimately how it started and it got me thinking well why can't these companies do things right and the answer simply is they don't know the risk is there and they don't have the right providers um to do it and and I think this is where, you know, vector choice is, is really important or, or having a good MSP is important because an MSP isn't about fixing your outlook when it's broken. Yes, I'm sure Will's team does a great job at that too, <laughs> but it, it's about building proper security practice. It's about building proper uh, policy. It's about building, implementing proper controls, proper solutions and monitoring and managing those controls because 10, 15 years ago, you had to worry about being attacked. Today, as a small business, I have no illusion. Like if you are two employees, have no doubt about it, that someone is willing to spend the time to look at you, to target you, to figure out who your employees are and to get it because they can get the money from you because they know all said and done, no matter what you say now, that you'll write a $100,000, $500,000 check if your business is gone. And th that not only that, maybe you won't write the check, but they can equally steal it from just take it straight out of your bank account now. <laughs> well, they don't need you to write the check. It's so they'll actually, whereas 10 years ago, if you were Bank of America, people were profiling you, figuring out who your employees are. I and mean, we saw Tesla just a few months ago, someone offered $500,000 to get into Tesla. Um, they're going through that effort, but now they're saying, you know what, I can do a lot less effort. I can spend a week figuring out what you like on Facebook, what your political affiliation is, what emails you're most likely to click on, um, who your favorite singer is, and use that manipulate it who your partners are who you do business with and use that to manipulate your employees to essentially open the door into that environment and you've now got to somehow become an enterprise in your thinking as a small business you have to think like an enterprise think of defending like an enterprise because you're basically dealing with the same type of attacks yeah danny uh you know uh, we just had a, uh, a customer of ours uh, i guess the the vendor got hacked, got the invoice, sent an email to the customer. Looks like the invoice that they've been paying for the vendor 
just had a link to wire the money. Well, the wire was to a hacker uh, account, not to the actual vendor, but the actual invoice was the cor correct invoice. But it, the problem is the wire information was a different. Um, and and it was I think it was like $74,000 that they actually wired. And luckily, I think it was Wachovia uh, called, uh, called it, I believe. Uh, one, one of the banks uh, called the transaction and said, hey, this doesn't look right. The, the different name going to a different wire. Uh, and because they've had that banking relationship, they called it and, 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 and called them and said, hey, you sure this is where you want to spend the money, uh, send the money. So that, that's a good example of emails that you get every single day and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go and pay that. I'm going to click on it and pay it because, you, you know, it's just routine. Right. And just pay attention to that type of stuff. Well, it gets worse than that. I saw one recently. Someone had got malware on their computer. They'd opened an email attachment. Actually, it wasn't even them. It was someone else in the company. They're using QuickBooks. Um, they'd opened an email attachment and thought nothing of it. It was a, a resume. And what it did is it actually went into their QuickBooks database, sent the QuickBooks database to the attacker. The, the attacker modified the database, the bank details in the database, sent it back to uh, like the, this program sitting there running under not an administrator just a normal unprivileged user and it swaps out the quickbooks database because the a normal user can do that and now the the company is going paying in all their invoices and they're not even they're not even saying oh i'm going to verify this as far as they're concerned their database is clean why wouldn't their yeah. database be clean uh, so it's not a case of they're getting an email which which is the old way of doing it i'm just going to chance my arm and send an email saying to vector choice from someone that looks like threat locker saying oh we've updated our bank details can you pay us in the new that's the old way now they're saying nah will smarter than that i'm going to get one of his employees to open something i'm going to switch out his quickbooks i'm going to change the account numbers in quickbooks and he's going to go in there oh well i'm in there i'm going to listen to their bank uh, their keystrokes on their bank accounts and everything like that so th th it, they're going a lot deeper than just, oh, I know. But of course, if they know, they can even just chance their arm and say, oh, you know, your invoice for $600, can you pay it to this account or $70,000 or or yep. whatever it may be. Yeah. And guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, put in the QA chat. And if you're on Facebook, uh, you can put it in the comments on Facebook and we will get to your questions at the end here. Yeah. And feel free to ask, even if you are outside of the scope of what we're talking about, you know, feel free if you're just concerned about you read something on the news, should you be worried about this? Probably answer is yes, but <laughs> the, uh, but put it in and, uh, you know, feel free to, to go a little bit off topic inside security as well. Um, there's another thing we're seeing a lot. I mean, and we've been seeing this for the last 18 months and I think it's become very highlighted in the last week. I don't know if you recall the, the water company in Florida that was yep. attacked. <laughs> uh, so, and this is another example of how these guys are getting smarter essentially what these guys did is they literally jumped onto a machine and the water company makes news because they're big, but they jumped onto someone's team viewer session on the computer. Um, the, the team viewer had no business running on that computer whatsoever. And they, they adjusted the high sodium. I, I'm, I remember the, forget the word, high, high, high chloride levels or high chloride levels um, to 11 million parts or 11,000 parts per million or something from a hundred and essentially poisoning the water source. Now somebody watched them do it and they yeah. stopped it, uh, but. Scary, that is very, very scary, especially when you're talking about water systems or power plants or electric, electrical grids and stuff, that is very scary. But, you know, it's the same thing. It, it, I think if, as me as a small business owner, I look at if someone hacked, like you were saying, hacked my QuickBooks uh, or someone, you know, did something just, uh, you know, small to my company, that's a big impact to a small business, uh, just as much as uh, poisoning water, for sure. Yeah, well, and, you know, it, the water, like I said, it's new, newsworthy. But here's yep. what's interesting about that. We have seen, I mean, I've, I, we signed up a partner a few months ago who literally had this happen to them, uh, where somebody had spoofed their email address and sent a team viewer link to somebody. So that they sent it. And just imagine you're using Vector Choice as your IT provider. And you get an email address, an email from an email that looks nearly like Will's. <laughs> uh, and in this case, it actually swapped out the letter L for a capital I, so you couldn't see the difference in Outlook. Uh, so, and saying, can you click on this Team Viewer link? And then you open Team Viewer, and now, and the MSP found out about this because the customer called them asking why they were looking at their safe passwords in the browser. I mean, this guy literally jumped <laughs> on the browser 
and start saving. But you see that a lot where people are spoofing their partners. And here's the thing, if your MSP hasn't locked down your environment properly, that team viewer link is just going to fire straight up and the, it's going to fire up and then they're on their machine. And the customer literally said, why are you looking at my safe passwords? I mean, you, you, <laughs> this MSP gets a call, customer yelling at him, why are you looking at my debt passwords? And yeah. they didn't have any idea. And it didn't even cross the customer's mind. Oh, wait there, this isn't the MSP. They, they literally just, it just, as far as they were concerned, the MSP was stealing their data. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I see you've got a picture actually, is that Barbara in the back, on your background there? Oh, I, yes, yes. I think, I think she got stung a few months ago. She did, one, she did. Uh, I, although I think they managed to get the money back, <laughs> like yep. $300,000. Um, again, another example of spear phishing where somebody will just, yep. if they can find out your business processes, it's very easy to say, oh, you're transferring $300,000 all the time. So it's, it's not, not a big deal for you uh, and, and something that's uh, normal. And, and that's, you know, and, 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 and people that's been on my webinar before, you've heard me say it a million times where antivirus and firewalls are not enough. And, and, and people say, well, I've got antivirus on my machines. I've got a firewall. What else do I need? And, you know, I, you keep hearing me say layers of security, layers of uh, security. And we call it in, on our side uh, a security stack. And, and that's why we added ThreatLocker to our security stack because they do this application control. So even though you have an admin right uh, to the machine, if you click on that email, it's going to kill that service uh, and say, nope, uh, uh, this application is not allowed to run in this environment. And so it's sort of a prove and deny type thing. We approve all the application that can run and deny everything else. So, um, you know, I think that's, Danny, that's what you're getting to is, is that fact of, um, it's so easy just to quickly click on a link and say, whoops, and, and not realize and it's too late, especially when an executable uh, or a file gets installed um, like that. This is a perfect example of that. So th this here is a resume. One of, one of um, our partners sent it to me that their customer tried to open it. Um, they were using Threat Locker, thankfully, and the customer got incredibly mad because they said, why is Office being blocked? and the office was not being blocked. Uh, so they opened this resume and I've had this on my computer for a year now and, uh, or my test machine, I wouldn't run on my machine. And you'll notice here when I open it, um, it I actually hit ignore a minute ago, but it, it pops up and says, um, threat locker blocked it. I just hit ignore before this call. I don't know why I did this. It'll pop up and say threat locker blocked this and the customer had sent a request for approval. Um, now here's what's interesting about this. Um, I've had this on my computer for a year. Like uh, for those of you who, who don't know this, Virus Total is like a, a database of all antiviruses. So you can check a hash of a file against every antivirus that's out there uh, and see is it good, is it bad, is it known, what people think about it. And you know, if I take a file like Firefox here and I, I check it against it, I think Firefox has actually unique hashes, so they might not find it. But if I go, let me go into approved here. So I'll take something that people know what is and I check that file against the database, it's going to come back and tell me every single database, whether it's good or bad. Uh, and, you know, some antiviruses have false positives, some don't, but it will tell you what every single antivirus says about it in the market. Well, this resume, I mean, it seems pretty harmless when you first open it. And in the background, what it's actually doing is it, it goes off and it, it down, let me close it because I think I'll get it to pop up again. Oh, I didn't mean to unpin. And what, what he's doing that, so, uh, pretty much what Threat Locker will do, even though that you got an antivirus and antivirus doesn't pick this up because it looks like a, a Word document, um, and but this is actually installing a virus on your machine. Um, what Threat Locker will, uh, does, it helps prevent that and, and, and will kill that application uh, from installing. Yeah, and what you'll see, now what's interesting about it is when the user requested access to that, because the user didn't know, and some users kind of know this stuff, they, they're used to it, others say, oh, I'm trying to open a resume and it's not working. So I'm yep. just going to click yes to approve everything. Uh, but it goes off to the MSP. The MSP has a, obviously a, a bunch of security experts that can look at this and say, we know it's not normal behavior for word to open random data. Uh, but here's, what's really interesting about this. When I click on virus total here, when I show this list, no antivirus a year after this happened has picked this up. It's still sitting on my machine. It can still encrypt your files. So, it's kind of this this idea that these guys are trying to keep ahead and that they're, they're, they're finding ways to elude the antivirus. So you can't just rely on, oh, I'm going to detect every threat out there. 
the um when when you think about trying to build security to your environment it's, it's almost very important to think about it's it's not very different from securing your home i, I don't think i mean will might have a different opinion um <laughs> uh, so uh, you you essentially say okay where do i start when i'm securing my home i'm going to put a lock on my front door um I, i'm going to i'm going to put a house alarm in i'm going to put some cameras in uh, i'm going to get a dog maybe i'll buy some guns uh, you know there's there's lots of different things you can do uh, to secure your home depending on uh, you know what you how secure you want to feel what you want to do but when you're when you're building those layers that Will's talking about, your antivirus is essentially your house alarm. This tells you when someone's in your house. Now it it doesn't stop someone taking the TV off the wall. It, it doesn't it doesn't stop. You can have three house alarms. It doesn't help you. So building out balanced security is about making sure that every element in security is different. Uh, so you're not you don't invest in three house alarms or multiple types of house alarms. You, you say okay, I'm going to have a house alarm. I'm going to put a lock on my door. I'm going to put some cameras in to give a forensic audit. And I would almost say threat locker is, if you think about zero trust, and this is just should be one part of your security with a lock on your door. So, uh, and the guy who's unlocking the door is, is Will's team saying, okay, we're going to review every new piece of software. A resume should not need to run software. We, we run Office, we run Grammarly, we run Google Chrome extensions. These are the things we trust and run in our business. If something else tries to run, whether it's through a user opening an email or whether it's through some kind of vulnerability or a rubber ducky. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those for you guys as well, because they might scare the crap out of you next time you buy a, a charging cable. <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's going to stop it from running because it's not on that trusted list. Um, Will, I mean, I don't know if you, do you think rubber duckies are a good conversation or? Oh, I think so. I think, uh, you know, me and you were talking about this. Uh, I think we were in Scottsdale. We were talking about it. So, yeah, I, I definitely love for you to share that um, because I think it will make people think twice about just plugging their phone into anything. Yeah, I've got a few of them lying around here. Um, I'm trying to find the different types. These are, if, any, if you've got any dental clients on here, any healthcare clients, any car dealerships, I've seen so many car dealerships get hacked by these. It's unbelievable. At dental offices, it's very common. Rubber duckies, they are USB devices. They look like this, or they can look like, and I know I've got one, there's one plugged in over here, and then exactly like phone charging cables. I mean, you cannot tell the difference. So I'll pull one up on the screen, because I know I have. Um, they're called OMG cables. Um, and basically, if you next time you buy a phone charger and it says made in China, just reconsider it. <laughs> so uh, just, just get just get one from Apple. It's just not worth the the, the cost. Uh, essentially, what they are is they look exactly like USB devices or phone charging cables. This is one here. What they allow an attacker to do is to deliver a keystroke payload to your computer. So when you plug it in, it types keys. It's not a USB drive, so it's not got any malware on it at a thousand words a minute. Um, and you, you might not even see it. It flicks up on your screen so fast. And this is an example of one of the scripts. I'll just share one here. And uh, if I go, here's one. I'm going to literally type one of the scripts that we did a demonstration for a few a while ago. What the rubber ducky does is it literally types in this. You don't even see it it's that quick. Hits carriage return. And what this does, this script, is it actually takes all your data and uploads it to the internet. Now, here's what's interesting about this. It's not malware. This is using something built into Windows, trusted, allowed by your antivirus, and it uploads it to the internet. Everything in my documents folder goes out to the internet. Now, what, as a, as a business, people often think, oh, physical security is not part of security. But it is, because if, you, if someone can do this, if someone can plug something into your computer, th they now have an entry point. I saw a, a car dealer, they had to pay $300,000 to get their data back because somebody, and of course we all know car sales guys aren't the best people at policing, <laughs> plugged in a white little cable into the back of a computer while the sales guy was getting his paperwork for the car and then went outside and created an entry point into their network. Two weeks later, everything, every bit of data had been extracted, all their data has been encrypted. It was a complete disaster uh, over somebody plugging something in. Yeah, so I wanna make sure everybody understands what Danny's saying is, don't buy cheap cables uh, for your phones or chargers because they can have that on it and, and you will never know, right? So be very careful. Um, uh, and we're not promoting Apple at all, but at the same time, buy legit uh, um, equipment from the right vendors or, or you can run into a situation like this. And yeah, again, it's not worth saving drives or cables. 
and don't pick them up at trade shows either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I, I remember actually somebody saying to me they, that the antivirus company was giving away um, phone charging cables. And they were legitimate cables, but they, they were relatively plain. I said, and they said, oh, I, I, I know the antivirus company isn't going to steal my data. I know they're not going to do that, which is absolutely right. But here's the thing. It's like you're picking cables up from a desk. All I have to do, and, and I did a lot of white hat hacking to get you to pick up that cable, is drop a cable on that desk, to drop a USB dongle on that dress, desk. And now you pick that up thinking, I trust this antivirus company, I trust this security vendor, why wouldn't I trust them? And they've now got access to your data. The other thing I'm gonna say though, is you have to assume you're going to be hacked. And it, it's, I noticed that your video at the beginning, Will, it said, not if, but when. At some point, someone penetrates your network, someone gets into your network and it, it's going to happen. So do, if you think it's not, then you're wrong. The difference between you going out of business though, and you having a bit of a hiccup, is the difference between what, who's managing it, who's responding to those attacks and what tools you're using to stop them moving around. And that's kind of so, where I want to jump in on the so, ring. So Danny, uh, uh, you know, from that point there, uh, and, and guys, none of this is scripted. We're just having free conversation now um, uh, uh, on this. So uh, it, with you saying that, Danny, a lot of people think uh, IT companies or managed services companies are created equal, right? Um, how, how, do you, how would you share right now in your words um, a, uh, what we call a one man shop or, or a beginner IT company or someone that's really taken cybersecurity seriously, more on the MSSP side, the managed security service provider side. How, how do you uh, explain to the audience uh, that all IT companies are not created equal? So, and uh, IT companies come for, and, and the, the, there's, there's more serious issues there because there's IT companies that aren't doing a good enough job. There's IT companies that are doing a great job who, who care about security or doing everything at the top end. And, and frankly, that's where you sit, Will. And I don't just say that because we're on the call and uh, you bought me a drink last week, but, <laughs> we, but, but genuinely, you know, you guys sit in that we take security seriously uh, pillar. There's, 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 there's serious companies as well that don't necessarily have the security experience because they've been around for a long time. Uh, they've built from a support system where dealing IT was just support and they're not focused on security. And then there's, I'm trying to think of the nicest way to say this, people that should just be locked up in jail because <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve to work in the IT industry. In the state of Florida, to cut somebody's hair, you have to get a license. I, you, There is no license requirement to work in IT. You have yeah. Yeah. zero qualification. There are a lot of IT companies out there. There are a lot of one man guys that are really smart. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's impossible to work 24 hours a day, monitor, get proper alerting, proper help desk, one man. But there's a lot of smart people that deserve to work in the industry. But there's a lot of um, one man bands out there who are a sales guy who knows more about IT. And I'll give you an example. I, I spoke to um, a healthcare clinic here in Orlando two years ago. They hadn't patched their servers. And I, and I spoke to the IT person and he, he, he hadn't patched his servers in three years. He genuinely didn't know that server patching was required. Genuinely didn't know it. And the problem is this guy has been in the IT kind of industry since the eighties. He hasn't improved his skill set. He hasn't improved his training and he's got a lot of knowledge, a lot, he knows a lot of people. He's been around for a long time and people trust him, but when you're choosing an IT company, you have to know that they've got the infrastructure, they've got the support. You have to ask them. I mean, go through, um, we have a white paper called Less Hackable. Uh, I think you can get that from Will as well. Uh, ask them, what are you doing about this? What are you doing about dual factor authentication? What are you doing about uh, files? What are you doing about application whitelisting? What are you doing about ring fencing? And if they can't answer the question, then say, look, it was nice to beat you. I need to go find someone who knows these things. Uh, and frankly, if, if you're not asking your IT company, you're probably not doing a good job for your own business either. Yeah. And we, and we get a lot of, uh, you know, prospects that, you know, I, I think my, my, I've got IT, he's doing a great job. Um, and, and, and what I, what I say to them is, Hey, he might be very good at what he does and he's doing, taking care of you, his quick response. He's fixing your computer issues. He, he's, He's fixing your internet and you know, your outlook issues, but are, is he really got a cyber approach to his uh, um, portfolio mentality 
to make sure that not just today, but also tomorrow that you're truly being protected? I, I can kind of give you a little bit of advice. If, if your IT guy isn't uh, pissing you off, <laughs> excuse me, <my, laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get into all saying that afterwards, but if he's not annoying you by pushing back uh, a little bit, he's probably not doing a good job. Like if he's not, you, security is not about making friends. You don't get into, you don't get into security to be someone's friend. You get into security to, to solve a problem. And every security person should be willing to have a hard conversation and willing to storm out for <laughs> and say, no, I disagree. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're talking to the CEO or, or, or of a multinational company or a CEO of a small business or someone that pays your rent. At the end of the day, you don't go to your doctor and your doctor say to you, you know, it's good that you're, you're 400 pounds, keep, keep it up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you, and you, you need truth from your IT people. And if they're not giving you hard truths, then they're probably not doing a good job. Uh, and and that a, a good managed service provider, someone who's willing to sit down with you once a quarter, tell you where you you're weak, tell you data so you can make educated decisions is really important. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So what are we looking at here? So I think one of the things I wanted to bring up when we get to the point, if you're going to be breached, that doesn't mean you're going to lose data. That doesn't mean your business is going to go down, but someone at some point is going to drop something into your company, whether it's a rubber ducky, or whether it's a, um, a piece of software that you're running. I, I don't know how much people follow the, the news is solar winds. Uh, Orion is a piece of software that was compromised a few weeks ago. It essentially allowed uh, foreign hackers into the U S treasury department and lots of other businesses. Um, and we, we'll never know the damage caused by that. But sometimes software that you use, whether it's Zoom, whether it's SolarWinds or Orion, it's going to get breached. And you can't go out there saying, I'm not going to buy software. I'm, I'm going to be upset with SolarWinds because they got breached. I'm going to be upset with Zoom because they got breached. Guess what? We're on Zoom now. They had seven vulnerabilities earlier this year. Uh, and every piece of software, the bigger the company gets, the more complex the code gets, the more vulnerable you get. Uh, it's just nature. And there's, there's nothing you can do to stop that. But what you can do is you can stop what happens after a breach occurs. So in the case of the rubber ducky, if someone plugs it in, of course, if you can restrict your USB ports, great. Don't buy cheap charging cables. You can reduce your risk. But if someone gets in, if someone manages to plug it into your server, if your cleaner plugs it in, I mean, you're paying your cleaner 10 bucks an hour and someone decides to offer them $500 to plug something into the server, um, you can control what can happen and how that can laterally move in your environment. So in the case of the rubber ducky, um, you can't stop a keyboard typing keys on a computer. It's just, otherwise you won't be able to work. <laughs> but what you can do is you can stop the applications that it opens. And, and, and this is something that's very technical. Uh, you know, we start talking about, I'm going to open PowerShell or I'm going to open things like that. You can say, what do these applications really need to do? Uh, and you can control them. So if somebody plugs a rubber ducky in and they try to use PowerShell to upload your data, PowerShell really doesn't need to access your data. It needs to do a lot and a lot that you probably don't even imagine how much it does in through IT administration, through software updates and stuff like that, but it doesn't need to access your files. It doesn't need to go out to the internet. So what you can do is you can ring fence applications. So when they are compromised and there's always gonna be a chance, there's always gonna be a case when an application is compromised, when it is compromised, it can't eat your data. It can't encrypt your files. It can't move laterally. And essentially what you're doing is you're saying, okay, the bad guy's in the house, but I took my bat and I broke his legs. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, maybe maybe not the best analogy. So he's, he's gonna crawl around on his arms and he's really not gonna do too much damage right now. So it, if, you, if you ring fence applications, and we saw it earlier on, last year, I guess now, um, 2020 did end apparently. Uh, so uh, <laughs> in, in March, we saw Zoom with all their vulnerabilities where it could call on PowerShell, it could steal your credentials. If Zoom is controlled in what it can do, the chances are, I mean, that's not to say you shouldn't patch it because you absolutely should. If there's no bug, fix it and fix it fast. But for the unknown bugs, for the zero day bugs, if you limit what it can do, it means, okay, Zoom's allowed to run, Zoom got compromised, but guess what? It didn't steal my QuickBooks database because it couldn't gain access to my QuickBooks database. So what this is, it's really showing about what applications need to talk to other applications, what applications need to access your data, 
you probably most businesses run 50 or 60 apps, which they don't even know until we show them the list. But the reality is five or six of those need to access your data. So if you can if you can ring fence, if you build walls around, build fences around them and say, this can talk to this, this can talk to this, then you you stop that lateral movement. So when you do have a vulnerable piece of software, when there is a zero day exploit, when somebody does manage to plug a rubber ducky into your computer, it's not going to move around in your environment. And this is something that it sounds very, very technical, but good experienced IT professionals, good experienced security professionals are gonna be able to set this up for you. They're gonna be able to manage this for you. And you know, Will's team know what Office needs to do. They're not gonna give it any more power than it needs. They know what Internet Explorer needs to do. They know what Zoom needs to do. Uh, so they can really limit that for you. That damage so, for you. So, and I think in the very non-technical terms and, and, and me coming, being a country boy coming from North Carolina, uh, uh, ring fence is like putting a bunch of cows in a, 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 a fence area and let them letting them out as you want to, um, and only controlling the the flow of that. Yeah, absolutely. Put 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 them in an area and only let them what you do. Another analogy is, you know, I let my daughter's boyfriend in the house. He's on the white list of people that are allowed in the house, but he's not allowed in my da daughter's bedroom. Hell, he's, he's ring fence <laughs> to the living room in the kitchen, <laughs> and that's it. So. Yeah. That's the kind of scenario you, you want to just control everything. It's all about least privilege for everything. And cat, whether it's cows or whether it's your daughter's boyfriend, probably similar comparison. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, good deal. Good deal. Well, guys, uh, you know, I, I don't want I, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. I know we scheduled an hour here, but uh, I don't want to uh, uh, string it out for an hour just to, uh, to waste your time. I, I wanted to give uh, some uh, uh, experience from Danny and, and where he comes from and some of the knowledge. I know this was a pretty technical uh, conversation, uh, but we uh, we can we're part of this webinar. If you're interested in ThreatLocker, uh, we are giving a 30 day free trial uh, for you to use it um, and and try it out. Uh, it definitely is going to help. Um, we're gonna, we're going to see a lot of things that should not be running in your environment that. It takes a different step. A lot of people think, hey, well, Vector Choice, aren't you monitoring or my IT company? Aren't they're monitoring my equipment? There's different monitoring is a very vague word um, when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. And there's different levels of monitoring, just like there's different levels of security as well. So, Danny, I, I appreciate you so much. Uh, I'm going to throw, uh, and let me, Danny, let me share my screen real fast. I'm going to throw up how to contact me real fast. Um, if anybody, has any questions uh, or anything, um, you can reach out to me. There's my direct email, phone number to the office there. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out, reach out to me. But Danny, thank you so much uh, for uh, being on the webinar today and uh, good information. And I hope uh, we didn't scare people too much. Yeah, Will, I appreciate you having me here. All right, thank you. Everyone thank have you. a wonderful day.